After the Mavs lost in Game 7 to the Clippers, a reporter asked Kristaps Porzingis a heavy question. Do you really fit on the Mavs? Porzingis responded, Good question. How do I feel? I mean, I'm good. I try to put in the work, try to work hard. I do my part, listen to the coaches, what I'm asked to do, and that's it. It was a very passive-aggressive comment, and as somebody who watched him a lot in New York, I've gotten used to hearing him say stuff like that. Every time he struggled, or every time he didn't get enough shots, he would passively blame the team for not giving him the opportunities. He's kind of a drama queen. It didn't start in the playoffs either. Months before that, after a loss to the Rockets, who had the worst record in the league, Porzingis did not get any shots in the fourth quarter. And he was notably pissed off. He said the problem was, quote, just the plays were running. The issue is, from my observations, whenever Porzingis had the ball, he took a very tough shot most of the time, which is why his efficiency was so low. But when he doesn't get the ball, he gets pissed. It's a lose-lose situation for the Mavs. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and today, let's talk about the Mavs' biggest dilemma moving forward. The Kristaps Porzingis question. This might be the most important decision for the future of their franchise, and the future of the Luka Doncic era. For the Dallas Mavericks, the story of the NBA playoffs centered around Luka Doncic. It was clear in the last few years, and it's clear right now, Luka is the franchise. And the team should do whatever it takes to build around him and help him succeed. However, Luka's rise to superstardom has coincided with Porzingis' fall from grace. Maybe he's having lingering knee problems, but for a guy who was brought in to be a secondary star, he has not lived up to it. It reached a breaking point in the series against the Clippers, where he averaged just 13 points, 5 rebounds, and less than 1 block per game. On June 6th, prominent ESPN writer Tim McMahon released an article detailing everything that's been going on behind the scenes in the Mavs locker room. There are questions about the chemistry between Doncic and Porzingis. The Mavs franchise cornerstones admittedly aren't friends. A distant dynamic that team owner Mark Cuban has compared to the early stages of the partnership between Dirk Nowitzki and Jason Terry. But Porzingis has been frustrated, often feeling more like an afterthought than a co-star as Doncic dominates the ball and the spotlight, sources told ESPN. Throughout his time in Dallas, Rick Carlisle has had numerous conversations with Porzingis about his role on the team. Rick told him he provides more value as a spot-up shooter than a focal point in the offense, which Porzingis reluctantly accepted. Now, I've heard people criticize Carlisle for this decision, and that a guy as tall as Porzingis, you know, 7'3", athletic, he should be bullying players down in the post. Against the Clips, they routinely defended him with smaller wing players. It seemed like the perfect situation for Porzingis to go to work. The problem is, he's not a good post player. <laughs> like, at all. Not even in the regular season. According to the NBA Stats dashboard, Porzingis posted up on 20.4% of his possessions, but only scored 0.98 points per possession. For comparison, that's even worse than Luka's post-up percentage, by a pretty significant margin, and especially bad for a guy of his size. In general, post-ups are much less efficient than other options the Mavs have. Plus, a lot of Porzingis' post-ups occur so far away from the basket, so he ends up taking a turnaround fadeaway, which are really tough shots. So, Carlisle is correct. Statistically, Porzingis is better off as a spot-up shooter. Over the years in Dallas, he's been molded into that role. But considering Carlisle is no longer the Mavs' head coach, this might change in the future. If you look at his numbers at face value, it doesn't look like his play dropped off that much. But a deeper look indicates a major shift in how he scores. Since coming to Dallas, around 40% of his shot attempts are threes, compared to his final season in New York, where only 25% were threes. Also, around 25% of his shots in New York were post-ups, up from 20% in Dallas. 43% of his shots used to come from mid-range, but that dropped to just 24% in Dallas. 65% of his shots used to be assisted. That increased to 72%. 
These changes indicate how Porzingis has moved out of the mid-range area where he used to spend most of his time in New York. It also indicates a transition towards a more off-ball role, hence why more of his shots are now assisted. The increased volume of threes has been better for his overall efficiency though, as he recorded the highest true shooting percentage of his career in the 2021 season. But he's also becoming basically a floor spacer, which is what Carlisle wanted. Even though him and Luka are good together, it, their chemistry is still a work in progress. As you can see, sometimes there's a lack of trust. It's gonna take a while before they can truly reach their full potential. The question is, how long will it take before Porzingis truly accepts that this is his permanent role? Initially, he came to Dallas with the intention of being a 1-2 punch with Doncic, a secondary star to form a dominant duo for years to come. However, instead, it's been mostly a one-man show with Luka. Now, Porzingis has turned into a glorified role player. The thing is, they're still very, very good on the floor together. Porzingis' skill set complements Doncic very well. In fact, two of their top three lineups in the regular season include Porzingis. Of course, his terrible series against the Clippers will raise some eyebrows, but overall, he's been solid. I feel like it's mostly due to his recent knee problems, because in the year prior, he went off against the Clippers. He was averaging like 30 points a game in the bubble, leading up to the 2020 playoffs. But in the 2021 series, just from watching him, he looked slower than before. His defense was a prominent part of his game, but it always seemed like he was one or two steps behind. In the past, he made it difficult for wing players to get a clean look, with his long arms and quick speed, so opponents had a very hard time taking advantage of him on a switch. This time, he looked slow, and the Clippers felt more and more comfortable running smaller guys at him, telling their players to continue attacking him off the dribble. As a result, the Mavs were one of the worst defensive teams in the playoffs. When it came to contesting shots at the rim, the Mavs allowed the Clippers to hit 67% of their attempts. Out of all teams in the playoffs, defensively only the Grizzlies and Wizards were worse than the Mavs. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, since he was dealing with lingering knee soreness. He can't afford to have another playoff series like this though. For the Mavs, the main concern is, if Porzingis no longer wants to be in this role and seeks a greener pasture, elsewhere. To be the man again, just like on the Knicks. What if Porzingis all of a sudden demands a trade? That would put the Mavs in a very awkward spot, because his current contract is pretty freaking massive. Even if he has other suitors, it'll be hard to move him. In a scenario where he does demand a trade, what do the Mavs do? I doubt they could get fair value in return, since Porzingis would have leverage if he publicly makes it known he wants out. But hey, at least he's always gonna be better than Dennis Smith Jr. The trade was worth it regardless. This has been quite the turbulent year for Porzingis. Throughout the season, we've seen headlines like this pop up. Mark Cuban claims that he's had dust-ups with Luka and other players, while Porzingis vehemently denied it, saying, I've never had any problems with my teammates off the court. I've always gotten along very well with them. I don't know what Cuban was talking about. Cuban also said their relationship is still developing, but they don't really have similar interests, so it's difficult. This isn't a new thing for the Mavs though. As I mentioned earlier, they actually have a history of their star players not getting along. In the past, Dirk and Terry did not like each other in the beginning either, but their friendship grew over time. There was also Jason Kidd and Jim Jackson, but uh, that was a train wreck. Hopefully, Porzingis will eventually accept his role, and the two could flourish together. Statistically, Porzingis and Doncic do play very well together. Anyway, that's all folks. What are your thoughts on Kristaps Porzingis? I feel like it's a tough spot. The Mavs know he wants a bigger role on offense, but the truth is, he's just not good enough to demand the ball on too many possessions. Definitely not good enough to take away possessions from Luka. Of course, he's unhappy being pigeonholed into basically a 3 and D big man. Maybe they can find a compromise. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and as always, 
Of course, I'll see you next time. Peace.